Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library with my friend Bernard, and it's time for some bedtime stories. So let's see what the first one is. It's called Old MacDonald Had a Dragon. This is written by Ken Baker and illustrated by Christopher Santora. And the publisher is Amazon Children's Publishing. Well, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a dragon, E-I-E-I. -E Not so fast, mooed the cow as it moseyed up to the farmhouse. I've got a beef with you. Dragons don't belong on farms, the cow said. It's my farm, said old MacDonald. I can have a dragon if I want one. Well, either the dragon moves out or this moo moves on, mooed the cow. Well, faster than the farmer could sing E-I-E-I-O, why, the dragon swooped out of the sky and gulped down the cow and swallowed it whole. Delightful dairy, said the dragon, and with a lick of its lips and a flash of fire, it whipped its wings and flew away. The farmer frowned. Hmm, too bad, he said. I'll miss that cow, even if it was a bit bullheaded. Well, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and a... Wait one mud stinking minute, oinked the pig. As long as there's a dragon on this farm, there'll be no more oink oink here or oink oink there. Adios, this hog is hitting the road. Well, faster than the farmer could sing E-I-E-I-O, the dragon swooped out of the sky, gulped down the pig, and swallowed it whole. Savory swine, said the dragon. With a lick of its lips and a flash of fire, it flapped its wings and flew away, kind of. The farmer wrinkled his nose and frowned. Good riddance. You know, that stinky sow always smelled of trouble. And besides, I really like my dragon. So old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a sheep. Well, a ram charged up the steps and butted old MacDonald right out of his chair. You can't pull the wool over our eyes, bawed the old ram. You get rid of that dragon or you can kiss your wool socks goodbye. Oh, did you see what's coming? Well, faster than the farmer could sing E-I-E-I-O, the dragon flapped out of the sky, gulped down the ram and the whole farmyard of sheep. Why, he swallowed them whole. Marvelous mutton, said the dragon. With a lick of its lips and a flash of fire, it wilted its wings and waddled away. The farmer folded his arms across his chest and frowned. I'm not so sure that dragon is a good idea after all, he said. I might need those sheep and their woolly socks to keep my feet warm in the night. Well, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a dog. Whoa, keep me out of your two-bit tune, barked the dog. I saw what happened to the cow. I saw what happened to the pig, and I saw what happened to the sheep. I don't want to be dragon feed. Well, faster than the farmer could sing E-I-E-I-O, the dragon dragged itself across the yard, gulped down the dog, and oh yes, he did swallow it whole. Delectable doggy, said the dragon, and with a lick of his lips and a flash of fire, it folded its wings, flopped down, and fell asleep. The farmer jumped off the porch and stormed across the yard. Now wait one doggone minute, he said, kicking the dragon in the snout. Give me back my Roscoe. Faster than the farmer could sing E-I-E-I-O, the dragon stood, gulped down the farmer, and swallowed him whole. 
inside the dragon why the farmer scratched his head and he smiled. Old MacDonald had a dragon, E-I-E-I-O, and in that dragon he had a cow, a pig, a ram, some sheep, and a dog, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo oink ba woof here and a moo oink ba woof there. Here a moo oink ba woof. Burp. The farmer and all the animals shot out of the dragon's mouth and tumbled onto the ground in a slimy heap. Terrible tummy ache, howled the dragon. And with a frown on his lips and one last belch of fire, it whipped its wings and flew up and away for good. The farmer smiled, plucked his guitar and sang, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow, pig, sheep, Dog, E-I-E-I-O. And that's really the way the farm should be. Well, we won't be eating any of those things, but we might eat some hot dogs. So can you get your fingers up and we'll cook them? I've got five little hot dogs they're cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. No little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, let's see. If it was your birthday and you wanted to have something special to eat, what would you have? Not for dinner, but for something special. Well, in this story, we're going to find out. This is called It's My Birthday. It's written and illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. And it's published by Candlewick Books. Do you see what we're going to make? Would you eat that? I would. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I need some eggs. I'll get you some eggs, said the chicken. And she did. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I've got the eggs, but I need some flour. I'll get you some flour, said the bear. So he went to his mom and got some. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I've got the eggs and the flour, but I need some butter and milk. Oh, I'll get you some butter and milk, said the cat. And she went right to the refrigerator for it. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I've got eggs and flour, butter and milk, but I need a pinch of salt. Oh, I'll get you a pinch of salt, said the pig. And he went and borrowed some from the beavers. They were having a picnic. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I've got eggs, flour, butter, milk, and a pinch of salt, but I need some sugar. I'll get you some sugar, said the dog. And he went to the store and bought some. It's my birthday and I'm going to make a cake. I've got eggs, flour, butter, milk, a pinch of salt, and sugar. But I need some cherries for the top. I'll get you some cherries for the top, said the monkey. And he went and picked some. 
It's my birthday, and I'm going to make a cake. I've got everything I need. We'll all help you make the cake, said the chicken, the bear, the cat, the pig, the dog, and the monkey. Thank you, everybody. Now, all of you can, what do you think? Help me eat the cake. Happy birthday. And you know, that is the best part about a birthday cake, is sharing it with all your friends. Mm -mm. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap. Clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time for us to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn some sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, I had some very special friends come and visit me at the library today, and I asked them if there was any book that they would like me to read, and their mom suggested one that she remembered liking, and it just happened to be in my story bag for tonight. It's called Strega Nona. This is written and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. And it's published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. In a town in Calabria a long time ago, there lived an old lady that everyone called Strega Nona. There she is. Which meant grandma witch. Now, although the, all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her when they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters in the convent went because Streganona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil, water, and a hairpin. She made special potions for girls who wanted to find husbands. And she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Streganona was getting old and she needed someone to help keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. And for this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. Thank you. The one thing you must never do, said Strigonona, is touch my pasta pot. Now, you all know what pasta is, right? Spaghetti? Mm-hmm. It is very valuable, she said, and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. So the days went by and Big Anthony did his work and Streganona met with people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. And Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed and he had food to eat. Now one evening when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing 
and peeking in the window, he saw her standing over the pasta pot. And she sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry, it's time to sup, so boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. And then Streganona sang, enough, enough pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. Oh, how wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't see Streganona blow three kisses to the pasta pot. And this is what happened. On the next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself. You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony. Oh, such a lie, they said. Well, Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then, then they'll be sorry. Well, that day came sooner than even Anthony would have thought, because two days later, Streganona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden. Feed the goat and milk her, and for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch my pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona said Big Anthony, but he was thinking, my chance has come. And as soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside and pulled the pasta pot off the shelf and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry, it's time to sup, so boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran to town to to the square, jumped up on the fountain and shouted, everyone, get forks and plates and platters and bowls, pasta for all at Streganona's house. Big Anthony made the magic pasta pot work. Well, of course, everyone laughed, but they all ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Streganona's, why the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out the pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. And there was more than enough for the, all the townspeople, including the priests and sisters from the convent. Some people came back for two or three helpings, but the pot was never empty. And when they had all had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. Simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to the compliments from everyone that he didn't notice that the pasta was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house, and it was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept boiling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept bubbling and pouring out from it. 
Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta just raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Strega Nona's house. Stop, yelled Big Anthony. But the pasta did not stop. And if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, why the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Why, one of the windows it came out of and then through the doors. The pasta kept coming and the pot kept right on bubbling. And the townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road and all the people were running a to keep ahead of it. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. Oh, we are lost, said the people. And the priests and sisters from the convent began praying. The pasta will soon cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Streganona not come down the road home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the song, the magic song, and she blew three kisses. And with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Then she turned around to poor big Anthony. The people in the town said, string him up. No, no, said Streganona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, she said. You wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot. Well, I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So, start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. But Streganona got to sleep in her own little bed that night. And I have a feeling that Big Anthony never sang that song again. He learned his lesson. Well, shall we do a finger play about, hmm, what else could we do on her? Hmm. I don't have any about pasta, but maybe we could have some monkeys jumping on our bed tonight. I've got five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. That means three little monkeys then were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Then two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. That left one little monkey who was jumping on the bed. When she fell off, well, she bumped her head. Her Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys to be on that bed. But I think we have time for one more story before our flannel board. And since it was such a nice day here, I'm hoping some of you went out to ride your bikes, get some fresh air and sunshine. This is a story about our friend Froggy. This is called Let's Go Froggy. 
It's written by Jonathan London and illustrated by Frank Rem Rem I always say this wrong, Remkowitz. And this one is published by Puffin Books. It was warm. Froggy woke up and looked out the window. Birds and butterflies and flowers. Hooray! sang Froggy. I want to go out and play. Okay, said his father. How about a bike trip and a picnic? Would you like that? Yes, said Froggy. Let's go. <laughs> well, first you have to get ready, silly, said his father. Okay, said Froggy. I'm getting ready. So Froggy got dressed. He pulled on his underwear, zap. Pulled on his shorts, zip. Pulled on his socks, zoop, zoop. Pulled on his sneakers, zup, zup. And buttoned up his shirt, zoot, zoot, zoot. Froggy, called his father. Let's go. I'm ready, yelled Froggy. And he flopped out to show him, flop, flop, flop. But Froggy, said his father, you need your bicycle helmet. Oh, I don't know where it is, said Froggy. Well, it's wherever you left it. I forget. You'll have to look for it then. So Froggy looked for his helmet. He looked under the sink. Bonk. Not there. He looked in the fridge. Slam. Not there. He looked in his toy chest. I found it, yelled Froggy, and he put it on with a slap. Zap. Froggy, called his father. Let's go. I'm ready, yelled Froggy. Flop, flop, flop. Oh, you should bring your butterfly net, said his father. I don't know where it is. It's wherever you left it, said his father. So Froggy looked for his butterfly net. He looked under the coffee table. Bonk. It wasn't there. He looked in the garbage can. Slam. It wasn't there. He looked in his father's golf bag. Oh, I found it, yelled Froggy. And he swung it at a fly. Swish. But he missed. Froggy, called his father. Let's go. I'm ready, yelled Froggy. Flop, flop, flop. Well, how about the ball Grandpa gave you, asked his father. Can you guess what Froggy's going to say? I don't know where it is. Can you guess what his father's going to say? It's wherever you left it. So Froggy looked for his ball. He looked under the stove. Bonk. He looked in the cookie jar, slam, not there. He looked in the bathtub, I found it, he yelled, and he kicked it into the goldfish bowl, splash. Froggy, called his father, let's go. I'm ready, yelled Froggy, flop, flop, flop. Now, let's bring the bag of peaches Auntie Lulu gave you, said his father. I don't know where it is. It's wherever you left it. So Froggy looked for the bag of peaches. He looked under the kitchen table. Bonk. Not there. He looked in his closet. Slam. Not there. He looked in his bed. I found it, yelled Froggy. Wonder what the peaches were doing in his bed. He took a bite, scrunch. He was getting kind of hungry. Froggy, called his father. Let's go. I'm ready, yelled Froggy. Flop, flop, flop. Daddy, can I bring that pack of trading cards Uncle Gerard gave me? Okay, Froggy, but hurry. Let's go. I don't know where it is. It's wherever you left it. Oops, here it is. I found it. It was in my pocket. Can we go now, Daddy? I'm ready. Okay, but do you know where my red backpack is? Asked his father. Daddy, said Froggy. It's wherever you left it. Hmm, I forgot. Froggy pointed. It's on your back. Froggy laughed. Whoops, said Froggy's father, looking more red in the face than green. Ready to go at last, Froggy flopped over to the bicycle. 
flop, flop, flop. Let's go, Froggy, said his father. I'm hungry, said Froggy. I want to eat now. So they ate their picnic on the patio. Munch, crunch, munch. Okay, I'm ready, said Froggy. Let's go, said his father. And off they pedaled into the sunset. Whee! I didn't think they would ever get out there for their bike ride. Did you? Well, let's see if we can find some bubble gum before we have the flannel board story. So reach in your pocket and pull out your piece of pretend bubble gum. Take the wrapper off, toss that in the trash, and then pop the gum in your mouth. Chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. Put your hand out. One, two, three, spit your gum in your hand and quit your other hand right on top and now your hands are stuck together with sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your chin should we leave it there no on stick sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your back on stick Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your hmm, nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad or whoever's around. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. So we started tonight with a song story about a very hungry dragon. And we're going to finish up tonight with a story song about a very hungry dragon. On our flannel board. This is called There Was an Old Dragon. Who Swallowed a Night, and it's based on the book by Penny Klosterman, one of my favorites. Now there was an old dragon who swallowed a night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed. They galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the dragon wished it would stop that clippity-clop, that clippity-clop. He swallowed the steed right after the night, and I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a squire who hollered, that's hot, when the dragon breathed fire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night, and I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a cook, a savory cook and his recipe book. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night and I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a lady it seemed quite shady that he swallowed that lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. 
He swallowed the steed right after the night, and I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a castle, swallowed it down to the last golden tassel. He swallowed the castle to hold the lady. He swallowed the lady to rule the cook. He swallowed the cook to fatten the squire. He swallowed the squire to calm the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. He swallowed the steed right after the night, and I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a moat. He guzzled and gulped it right down his throat. With all of that water, he started to bloat, and that's when the dragon roared, and I quote, Okay, enough, I've had enough, more than enough of this swallowing stuff. Hmm, maybe I've been a tad impolite. Perhaps I should have only swallowed the night. So he burped out the moat that caused him to bloat. He burped out the castle along with the tassel. He burped out the lady who found it quite shady. He burped out the cook and his recipe book. He burped out the squire blackened with fire. And then with all of the power he could amass, the dragon burped out one last billow of gas. Burp! And with a terrible speed, he burped out the steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop, clippity-clippity-clippity-stop! There was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. Ah, just right. Good night. All right, so let's finish up with our Sandra Boynton book for tonight. And we're going to be reading Jungle Night. This is published by Workman. It is midnight in the jungle. The moon will surely rise. And all the animals are sleeping with whisperings and sighs. Listen to the tiger. Zee, zoo, ha. Listen to the cheetah. Chee, chee, ta. Can you hear the crocodile? Snorkel, woo, snorkel, woo. And all the little monkeys, chatter, choo, chatter, choo. We grunt, we grunt, go the red river hogs. Rop, rub it, rop, rub it, go the green jungle frogs. The dazzling bird makes quite a long, quiet, That was fun. So let's finish up with our Sandra Boynton book for tonight. We're reading Jungle Night, and this is published by Workman. Well, it's nighttime in the jungle. The moon will surely rise. All the animals are sleeping with whisperings and sighs. Listen to the tiger. Zee, zoo, ha. Listen to the cheetah. Chee, chee, ta. Can you hear the crocodile? Snorkel, ooh, snorkel, ooh. And all these little monkeys, chatter, choo, chatter, choo. We grunt, we grunt, go the red river hogs. Brop, brop it, brop, brop it, go the green jungle frogs. The dazzling bird makes a long, quiet, coo. And the great big gorilla goes, hee, hoo, hoo, hoo. Sometime after midnight, the elephant goes snore. And whoever had been sleeping isn't sleeping anymore. Well, thank you for joining me and Bernard for some bedtime stories here from Wood Library, and we hope you'll join us again another time. Bye-bye.